Hello everybody, welcome back to Cure for the Common Game. Today, in deck number 586, we're going to talk about Tam, Luminous Enigma. In sound, even. Yeah, yeah, that was a that was a nightmare, I do apologize. So we've got white, black, and green to mess with here. We have a 3-3 three, three Nightmare Beast, and each other creature you control enters the battlefield with an additional Vigilance counter on it. So, okay, everything we play after this is going to have Vigilance. A Vigilance counter. So for three mana and removing three counters from among any number of creatures you got, so any three counters be fine, you put the top three cards of your library into your graveyard, then you return a permanent card with CMC three or less from your yard to the battlefield. Now I'm sure there are a lot better builds than I have done, but what I did here was the most common counters to have are, yes, we've got a lot of the new Ikoria things that put ability counters out there, but if we're really wanting to use that second ability, plus one, plus one counters is the most prevalent. So that's how I went with it. So uh, what do we start with? We'll start with ramp, shall we? Now, there's a little more ramp than normal, mainly because these little permanents... CMC3 or less, we can get back if we want to. So we've got Lanowar Elf and Skull Prophet. Orzhov Key Rune, uh, you know, it can become a blocker if you need it to be. The Locket, we can get back and continually draw cards off of it. Ferdlid, we can get back and continually get lands. Of course, Elvish Mystic, Elves of Deep Shadow, Obzon Banner, same thing. Celestia Signet, Orzhov Clue Stone, Arcane Signet. Migration Path, Harrow, Indotha Crystal. I kind of like this energy here. You can cycle it away if you don't need it right then and then just keep getting it back. Yeah. Uh, so, so Lesnia Locket, Talisman of Unity, Commander Sphere. There again, you know, drawing that card. And Rampant Growth. So that's our ramp. So let's, let's get into our plus one counter creature, shall we? These are creatures that, I mean, typically... I don't know, maybe not typically. We have the uh, Outlast guys. You, you know what I'm saying? I'm on Falconer. Uh, all creatures with a 1-1 one, one counter on it you have have Flying. The uh, Bonkin. Uh, now uh, all your 1-1 one, one counters have First Strike. Uh, long Shot Squad gives them Reach. Kind of redundant, yeah. Um, there's more. Uh, Merrick Nightblade. Death Touch. This is especially saucy with things like Triskillion. Because when Triskillion has Death Touch, yeah, yeah, that's that's pretty awesome. Um, well, and also Triskillion's bigger brother, the Walking Ballista. You know, there's no reason to not to. Uh, Swarm of the Bloodflies. You know, it comes in with counters, and it gets counters when things die. Enduring Scale Lord... A Wildborn Preserver, Hungering Hydra. I want to talk about Warden of the First Tree for a little bit because this is underplayed. And while, yes, I mean, it does meet a very specific three-color restriction. and But, okay, uh, this was a like a color-shifted figure of destiny from way back. And so for two mana, it becomes a human warrior. For four mana... If it was a warrior, it becomes a spirit. And then, if it's a spirit, put five counters on it. Now, here's here's the thing. You can use that last ability as many times as you want, because it will still be a spirit. Right? And so, if you've got yourself some uh, extra mana at the end of a turn, drop five more counters on there for six mana. That's kind of not a bad rate. Sandstep Mastodon. Now, I've got Grun in here, and the more I think about it, the more I probably need to take Grun out. Because there's a lot of creatures we're attacking, you know, in theory, with a lot of creatures, and Grun may not be. I don't know, there may be instances where, uh, you know, this is my one, one guy, and I'm sending him out there, but uh, all I know is... I have recently got beaten down by the Grun deck. Ooh. Of course, we got Mowu. Everybody's favorite, the Keen Sight Mentor. You know, 
on each creature you control with vigilance. Well, our commander is going to pass out vigilance to every creature we play after it. So this seems like a really good... It's almost like they made it for it. Because <laughs> they did. Uh, Stormwild Caprador. Uh, is there anything more fun to say than I attack with my bird goat? Uh, the Cryptic Trilobite. Ugin's Conjurant. Because, you know, they just how many counters you can put on there. Elite Scale Guard. Hornbash Mentor. Karu Bloodsucker. Yeah. Second of the Creature. Diatar, Old Sworn Giant, a Storm Coil Serpent, and then of course we got our Evolution Sage because this is, I mean, Landfall Proliferate? What? <laughs> so we're definitely going to be proliferating some 1 1 counters, maybe even some Vigilance counters. Why not? Uh, and. Yeah, plain white celebrate. Seven mana is a whole lot of mana not to say you win the game. But if you can proliferate four times, that's pretty. That's what caught my attention. Now, I'll probably never make the citizen tokens, but returning a permanent from your graveyard to your hand four times, I'm probably never going to gain 16 life off of it. Although, I, I guess if I was really, I might. But then we've got Pledge of Unity. It's not bad. Uh, what else we got? A Johnny's Unyielding. You know, five will encounters on your team. Uh, Courage in Crisis. Uh, proliferates. What about Weapon Rack? I mean, I really, really like Weapon Rack. Uh, especially with the now obviously the doubling cards would be amazing in in here um but especially with weapon rack because it would enter if you had doubling season the weapon rack would come in with now six and then when you moved one it, it would turn into two so that would be ridiculous you could get 12 counters out of this thing uh grave strength because our commander is working on getting cards back out of the graveyard, we got to make sure there's something in the graveyard worth getting, right? So that's why Grave Strength or, you know, even like the Eerie Ultimatum, you know, just, hey, um, let's get them all back. Uh, we have a, I guess we're going to start into the removal here with Mythos. Of Nethroy. Um, destroy target non land permanent if it's a creature or if green white was spent to play this spell. I'm going to be honest with you, I have no clue what this card does. Uh, I'm pretty sure if you spend black, green, white, it's a Vindicate. Yeah, yeah. The wording, though, I mean, is. Was that the best they could come up with? I, I, I don't know. But anyway, the flavor text on it does speak of the Ozolith. So the Ozolith is, you know, if you're playing 1-1 one, one counters, just about got it, right? Um, Sunbringer's Touch, always a decent card. Uh, cards in your hand. So let's, let's draw some cards, shall we? You know, Painful Truth. That's max colors. We're go I mean, if we do three... Uh, to return the wild speaker, of course, great card and camaraderie. You know, gain X life, draw X cards, creatures get bigger. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty good. So we have a wild onslaught. You know, four for one, eight for two. I don't know that I'll ever do the eight for two. Maybe I mean, you know, there's enough ramp in here. Uh, we have Death's Oasis, which I'll be honest with you, is in there because of the colors. And we are kind of messing with the graveyard a little bit. Um, Casualties of War fits the colors because it's just amazing. Uh, Hunt the Weak, Nature's Chant, and Death Sprout because it's just such a good utility card. 
Now we got our uh, non-basic lands. We're going to start with, of course, the Triome, uh, Exotic Orchard, Transguild Promenade, Orzhov Basilica. I think I pronounce that different every time. <laughs> Golgari Guildgate. Forsaken Sanctuary, Celestia Guild Day. Gotta have that Gavity Township, you know, to put them them counters on. Command Tower. Evolving Wilds, Blossoming Sands, Orzop Guildgate. The Sand Step Citadel. Get all three colors. Tranquil Expanse, Jungle Hollow, Scoured Barrens, Golgari Rot Farm, and Celestia Sanctuary. Yeah, yeah, that's it for Tam. Um man, I, I can tell you this. I'm going to have to get a ton of those uh, Vigilance counters <laughs> to punch out uh, a little punch out card. A whole bunch of those. Uh, but that is it for Tayum, uh, number 586. So let's go over here and put it onto the wall. Ooh, yeah. Done. Now, I have got the very next deck for tomorrow is uh, the exact same color combination, but we're going to see, you know, there's some overlap there, but we're going to see exactly how uh, ooh, how much different they are. It's uh, tomorrow is Nethroy, so uh, I do appreciate y'all watching. Y'all let me know what you think, but right now, we're going to shuffle and cut.